This is Okadowski at WeAreChange.org here in Acapulco, Mexico, and I'm joined by Roger Veer, a man who has been denied entry into the United States, a man who's also referred to as the Bitcoin Jesus, and he's working on a lot of amazing projects that you should know about because it can help you freely outside of the state, outside of the corporate regulations. There's people creating solutions for very important things like thieves. When people steal money, especially with the new digital day and age, uh, when people steal your Bitcoin, Roger has thought of a solution to help you. Now, Roger, can you tell us about your specific project that you created? Uh, it's like, I, I, the best way I can describe it is like an anonymous bounty hunting kind of vigilante website, which, which sounds really fascinating. But can you break it down exactly the purpose that you're trying to serve with your project? Sure, um, that was a pretty close description, although I'm not trying to inspire vigilanteism. Uh, basically, uh, about a year ago or so now, somebody hacked me, uh, one of my email accounts, and was trying to extort $20,000 worth of Bitcoins from me. And uh, rather than paying that, I put out a bounty for, of $20,000 worth of Bitcoin to any inf anybody who provides the information that leads to that person's arrest. And Bitcoin allows all sorts of really interesting things to be done uh, that allows you to actually be able to submit the information to the police, of who the person is and whatever evidence and then collect this bounty anonymously. So right now at BitcoinBountyHunter.com, you can see there's a list of bounties up there. Uh, I think the biggest one right now is around $25,000, dollars uh, at the moment, uh, over 100 Bitcoins for some of the bounties up there. And anybody can add a new bounty as well. And then people can anonymously collect these bounties by providing the information that leads to the arrest of the person that's doing whatever bad stuff. So I think that's a real big change compared to what we've had available to us in the past. So a lot of white hack or gray hack kind of hackers who know what they're doing could look at the technology, could look at the blockchain and try to find out who did something illegal like extortion or stealing, especially when it comes to the digital day and age. So this is like the Bitcoin kind of uh, accountability police. I mean, is that a fair way to describe it? And would you be able to show us on your phone um, some of the bounties that are going on now and maybe some of the success stories that you had with it? Sure. Um, so it actually, you just use the Bitcoin blockchain to prove um, to prove that you submitted the evidence before anybody else. So, um, but here's the frequently asked questions. But let's take a look at the, at the bounties here, and we can see like, the actual bounties that are listed on the website. So, uh, the same person that hacked my email account hacked Satoshi Nakamoto's email account and another great guy named Hal Finney's email account. And there's currently a, a reward of just under ten thousand dollars for that one, which is thirty-seven bitcoins. There's a reward, reward for the Mount Gox hacker, um, for a Bitcoinica hacker. Uh, there's some other guy that's been scamming people. There's a 100 Bitcoin bounty for the guy that was doing a DDoS and extortion against a, a website called Bitolo. And anybody can add their additional uh, bounties to there as well. And anybody can contribute to the bounties. And pretty soon we'll, it'll be set up so that if the bounty's never claimed, each person that contributes money to the bounty will be able to receive the money back to them uh, if the bounty's never claimed. So yeah. it's really going to get better and better as time goes by with all the cool things that Bitcoin enables us to do. And it's really interesting seeing it done from this kind of like free market perspective because Bitcoin is such a new technology. The government and police, they, they don't know what to do with it. They don't even understand uh, a lot of government officials, a, government, a lot of regulators need to take special classes just to even understand what Bitcoin is. So it's really interesting to see that kind of innovation saying, you know what, there's going to be some accountability, but on the private sector as well. Where do you see that kind of battle happening? Because we see the government trying to regulate it, control it, uh, because, you know, just like any piece of technology, it's a double-edged sword. And then you see innovators like yourself doing all these amazing projects. Do you think there, there's going to be a bump in the road? Do you think there's going to be more government regulations? Where do you see government and Bitcoin going together uh, in the United States? Yeah, government's really good at making bumps in the roads and causing problems for people. But uh, because of the nature of Bitcoin, there's not really anything they can do about it. I and mean, it's so amazing that now, thanks to Bitcoin, anyone anywhere in the world can send and receive any amount of money with anyone else instantly, basically for free. And there's nothing any of the politicians can do to stop that. And that's incredibly exciting, incredibly powerful. And I don't think the politicians are going to be able to stop that. And if I did think they could stop it, I wouldn't have gotten involved in Bitcoin. Yep. And they definitely can't stop it, and it threatens their authority. So we're seeing all these different kind of uh, ramifications being thrown down the gauntlet, whether it's the Silk Road case or just all the other cases that are just developing and these new laws and rules are just being made on the spot. But you also had a couple of issues yourself dealing with uh, trying to get back into the United States. You were a U.S. citizen before, you renounced your citizenship, and now what happened? Can you tell us in detail? Yeah, the people at the U.S. Embassy uh, in Barbados were basically just playing juvenile games that you would expect from a five-year-old. Uh, my job in order to apply for a visa is I had to prove ties 
outside of the U.S. I've been living outside of the U.S. for almost a decade. I brought a big stack of paperwork to prove all those things. The people at the U.S. Embassy in Barbados physically refused to even allow me to slide my proof of ties outside of the U.S. through the slot in the window for them to review, and then had the audacity to say, we haven't seen any proof that you have ties outside of the U.S., so we're going to deny your visa, even though I had the proof in my hands and said, let me show it to you. And they said, no, we're refusing to even touch your paperwork to look at your proof. Visa denied. And it's just insanity. It was like yeah. something out of the twilight zone. And those people, I hope you watch this. You guys should be ashamed of the way that you behaved. It's so juvenile to play those sorts of stupid games. Yeah. Be they, ashamed. They do it illegally. They do it not because they, they uh, have a right to. And they break their own rules that they're supposed to follow. Same thing happened with me in Canada. I walked into... Um, Trying, trying to walk into Toronto, I was stopped at the border, interrogated three times, and I was told I have a criminal record, that I was convicted of a misdemeanor. I was never convicted of any misdemeanor. I have a clean record. But they were like, no, we're just going to say you do. And based on that technicality, you are banned from Canada from 10 years. So I understand what you're going through, you're st but it's still up in the air. So hopefully your visa does get approved. But you're doing really amazing things. Is there anything else that you want to say to the audience out there? And also, last of all, if you could leave it where people could find out more about you. Sure. If, if you're the type of person that's opposed to small groups of people using violence to control the rest of society, get involved with Bitcoin. It's so incredibly easy. Just go to Bitcoin.org, download a wallet, get some Bitcoin, start using it, and it completely strips away government's control of, uh, of people all around the world. It doesn't matter if you're in the U.S., Mexico, Europe, South America. It works anywhere on the planet for anyone. It doesn't matter what color your skin is or where you were born or anything about you. So get involved with Bitcoin today. It's the best tool the world has ever seen to bring more freedom to people all over the world. You can find out more about me or contact me at rogerveer.com, R-O-G-E-R-V-E-R.com. Thank you so much for the innovation and the great work. Really appreciate it.